So in a world of movies where we have Loki and Thor, it's interesting that we finally actually have a real Viking movie. And this movie succeeds on that. Before we begin, just make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe real quick, it takes a few seconds, and it helps out the algorithm so that other people can see these videos. The Northman is the latest movie from our tour filmmaker or art house filmmaker Robert Eggers. He is a very cool director. He made a sketchy movie and then The Lighthouse. Uh, I watched The Lighthouse. It was one of the craziest movies I've seen ever. And it's also, it's, it was one of the best movies of 2019. He has a very unique visual style. And this movie is a another a unique cinematic experience where you are on a journey, a Viking tale, and you are put into this world of all this lore. And like when, when I got out of the theater after watching this movie, I was like, where the frick am I? Like, what is going on? Like it was, it, it, the movie puts you so far into this whole world that you get, that like you, you just feel like you're there. There's a spider web, I just. But Robert Eggers' visual style is so unique. He has so many huge wide shots. He has, there's, all, there's many wonder sequences where it's just one long take where we just follow Alexander Skarsgård as he just like beats up a bunch of people. Like there's there's different raids and stuff. And um, this movie, this, the movie's visuals are honestly kind of perfect. Talking about Alexander Skarsgård for a little bit, he has a really unique role in this movie because he's the main character. He ha he is on a in a tale where he's trying to find the person who killed his father, his uncle. He wants to find them. He wants to avenge his father, find his mother who was stolen, and then kill that guy. And Fionir, Fionar, that, that's his mission, that's his whole goal. That's, that's the entire plot of the movie is he's going out and to do it. That's the whole movie. It's like The Revenant, except set in during Viking times. But this is a, it has a very simple plot and it does have a bit of a slow pace, but the movie does sprinkle in lots of interesting uh, action pieces. There's a cool sequence where he needs to get a new sword or he's raiding a village or something like that. But there are a lot of slow moments in there that maybe some people might not enjoy. Uh, specifically slow sequences with Anya Taylor-Joy's character who honestly is somewhat two-dimensional. She doesn't have a full story. We don't really know her on the inside and out. We kind of just know that she's in love with this person and th that love interest thing is like, you know, it's eh, it's, eh, it's not that crazy or anything but she is kind of important for the plot of the movie and for the character, uh, or for Alexander Skarsgård's character in order to complete his thing that he's going on. This movie talks about themes of like fate and purpose and um, doesn't explore that too deeply, but it's more just a simple tale because, it's interesting because when we're in this movie, we are in the world of the Viking, and so that means that it doesn't do much. You don't say much in order to express a lot. You say one line, I'm gonna kill my uh, the guy and then that's he he means it he says it and he means it the other guy says I'm gonna kill you he means it he wants to kill the guy and you're like holy frick these guys are insane these guys are kind of terrifying what the heck these guys are brutal Alexander Skarsgård doesn't give an insane performance like Willem Dafoe or uh, Robert Pattinson in The Lighthouse those two performances are one of the best I've ever seen ever in my entire life but it, this isn't to that level he does bring insane brutal force into the movie and he has really interesting eyes. His eyes say a lot in a lot of emotions when there's a lot of close-ups on characters. But with that deep dive into the lore, there might be a lot of sequences where you might be like, what the frick is going on here? Like, what, what the heck, what is this? Essentially, Robert Eggers, he took, he did, it seemed like he did a lot of research into going into like the traditions, like ancient traditions, like there's different sports that they played and then like different weird things that they did with like horses and like some weird sketchy stuff that they do. In order for the next heir to be king, you have to do this really weird thing and they have to like sit in a hut and do some weird stuff. And it's kind of random and you see this and you're like, the frick is, what is going on? But then you realize that this is like, these guys are barbarians and they're like doing weird, like this is, these are the traditions, this is like what they do. And so these parts, you know, you might be like, what is, what's going on? But this is like sort of part of the lore of, of like the Viking thing. And I found that to be interesting, but also a little weird. The craziest thing about this movie for me is the fact that we are getting a small filmmaker. He's normally working on movies that have a small budget, $4 million, $11 million. And we got this one, which has about $90 million. That's a big, that's a big, huge jump. And um, Robert Eggers has reportedly said this is the closest thing he's ever gonna do to making a popcorn movie. Uh, it's really unique in that sense, but 
that's also where some troubles come in because sometimes our tour filmmakers, they only know small budget. And so then when they jump up to such a high budget like 90 million, sometimes mistakes can happen. Sometimes things can not work out. For example, the director of The Amazing Spider-Man is known for small like romantic comedy movies. And then they gave him $200 million to make Spider-Man. And you know, it's, a, it's all right. And so sometimes those mistakes happen because he's not used to big budgets. He's not used to green screen stuff. And for this one, Robert Eggers, it seems like he had much more control in producing the film because he is a producer of the movie. And so he has much more control into what goes into the movie. They shot a lot of stuff on location. They shot a lot of wides, a lot of wonders. There's a lot of huge action set pieces, lots of uh, villages, extras and chickens and cows and all this stuff that costs a lot of money. And that's kind of where the budget went into and you can tell. And there's also, also a lot of sprinkled in CGI moments as well. And you can tell that that was probably one of those things that he was working on or one of those things that the budget went into. With that transition from him being low budget to high budget, I think it worked out really well. He was able to utilize the high budget, but there it does feel like a little messy in terms of maybe pacing. Like we randomly just start playing a sports game, like I mentioned earlier, and it kind of fell out of place, but it is one of those random things where he just wanted to explore the, the traditions or like one of these sports that they, that they used to play back then. But it seemed like that it did, you know, kind of just veer off the story a little bit. It just didn't really make that much sense. I also liked how Robert Eggers' low-budget, artsy techniques were still put into place as well, where he had close-ups with, like, weird stuff happening in the background. He had abstract imagery. He had, like, wide shots with, like, weird composition in him. He had interesting movements of, like, characters as he wanted to do, like, camera, sh camera dolly shots and stuff like that, or crane shots. But they were really unique, and they did not, like, take away from the story. They added onto the story, and I found that to be really awesome. I also want to give a quick mention to... Nicole Kidman's performance in the movie was actually one of the best uh, parts of the movie because she was so weird and she was so interesting, but she delivers on like dynamic, emotional level. Like she, she gives a lot in the performance and I think it was awesome. Also, another quick mention to the sound design and the music of the movie. The sound design is always perfect in a Robert Eggs' movie and in The Lighthouse, it was pretty much perfect. And in this one, it is as well. There's so many interesting sounds and the music soundtrack is like two hours long and it like fits every single scene and adds to the whole experience, which is why I recommend watching it in theaters. I loved how the way the movie ended. Uh, I'm still kind of thinking about it right now, like what the frick just happened, but it was it was really cool and it was really entertaining. Um, but overall, I found this to be an awesome, epic movie. If you're interested in this type of stuff, it goes deep into the Viking lore, so be aware of that. Some stuff might be like kind of weird to you. It's really interesting. It's, it's rated R for action and violence and there's some um, people who die and so i'd recommend this movie the northman robert eggers i'd give it a nine out of ten but yeah i'm really excited for what robert eggers is going to do next i heard he's working on nosferatu remake which is like an old movie from like 1922 i'm not the biggest fan of horror movies but the lighthouse is like more of a thriller which i found to be really entertaining i'm probably not going to watch his other movie i'm just i'm too scared and also, I'm not a horror guy, so... But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this review. If you're interested in this movie, go watch it. Um, it's going to be really entertaining. Watch it in theaters. Watch it Dolby Cinema. Try your best to get watch it there, um, but it's awesome. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.